Welcome everyone to today's video, to this week's video. My name is Dimitri Dimitrov from the Dimitrov Boulay Piano Duo. And in today's video, we were discussing with Elvira what to make for you, what, what video to make for you. And I thought, since I have students that are playing this piece by Rachmaninoff, Prelude Opus 23, number five, I thought in the past I've played the Prelude, I've studied it, I didn't play it in concerts, but I've, I've worked on it. And I thought I would just shoot a random video for you explaining a few things um, about the first page, a few things that my students encounter that are difficult, how to conquer those difficulties, and how I think about the piece. Basically, I'm going to combine the two things because what I teach is what I do in my own practice. So let's get started. I'm not going to organize the video in any way, so it's going to be basically a video improvisation on this piece with a few ideas that I think will be helpful to you when you are working on it. One of the first things that, that when I worked on this piece and what I tell my students is to find a good... Of course, that all depends on where you are in your progress with, with this piece. There are different things you have to work on depending on the stage you're at. But one of the things that, that is very important is to have a nice balance between this note and this. If I skip the secondary voice or the accompaniment, let's call it like this, if I skip these notes, you get a melody, a melodic line. And that's something very important that has to come across. So once you learn your piece, make sure that you don't mix the two voices not but so the listener and you if you're playing for yourself or if you're playing for other people other people can understand very well what the piece is about and if you're playing just for yourself you can as well understand that it's about this melodic line That's, that's quite um, tricky to do sometimes because you have bigger chords. Later on, if you look at uh, the last... At the last system uh, of my score, I just found some random score on IMSLP because I couldn't find my book. The danger here is to start playing the, the chords too loud of course they have to increase because also the melody increases the line increases but you need to still keep the the chords the accompaniment it's it's a I I think it's a understatement what what this these voices do to the for the piece to call them just an accompaniment but for the purposes of distinguishing like let's say something that is secondary um it is still important to increase in volume according to what you're doing with the melodic line but you have to keep them somehow a little bit in the shadow of um the melodic line so look if i play the last two systems you start very soft So then my chords, the secondary thing, the secondary, the accompaniment, I would just call it the accompaniment, the accompaniment, the chords, I'm going to keep pianissimo. So if I start piano, I will keep the chords pianissimo. If I increase a little bit, then I, you see that I increase also the chord. listen for the melodic line not to be overpowered and overshadowed by the chords, the repetitive chords. So that's one of the things that you can work on according to, again, according to where you are 
with the piece. Now, for the people that want to um, improve their speed, because I've seen um, a lot of trouble with improving your speed, one of the difficulties here is, first of all, it's learning it. You, you need to learn and to know very well what the notes are, because you have these jumps. Also later. And you have some big jumps. So on one hand, you need to learn either to read very quickly, so you can catch and figure out what the chord is before you're going to play it, so you know what you're going to play, or learn the piece by heart, whatever um, is easier for you. But one important thing that you have to do is to prepare, to learn to prepare your hands before you're going to play. If you observe carefully when I'm playing, you will see that my hands transition to the place that I have to play, to the note that I have to play, before they transition quicker than I'm actually going to play. Look. Look at my left hand. You see that there is time between the transitioning of my hand and the time that I'm going to play. That means that I have the speed to afford to be able to, I will be able to afford to play the piece faster because I can transition so quickly. Now, on one hand, I need to know the note and I also have to be able to, to practice that to transition to the note that I know in order to play it on time. Look from this, I need to, to already go to the next. You see here also, from this, I doubt it because it, I didn't check really the chords. And the faster you want to play, the faster you need to prepare. So my recommendation would be, perhaps it would be easier if you mark all the spots where you have jumps. Maybe that helps. Some people remember them without having to write anything down. So every time you have jumps, for example, here in the left hand, I would practice this. To consciously observe and see that your hand arrives at the key before you're going to press that key. You see left hand needs to transition here. And there is a lot of other spots, like if you look at the third system, you have... No, that will be easier because the space is not so large, let me see... Yeah, at the, at the end, the last two bars. C, C sharp, C, and then you need to jump to that chord. These three are easy because they are next to each other, but after the C natural, and then after the chords, you need to practice. So between the C natural and these chords, then you have the other chords are a little busy, easier because they're next to each other. And then you need to jump very quickly to the B flat. So as long as you train to be able to jump before you have to play, you will uh, see great progress with, um, with the speed. Of this piece and the third thing that I that I was doing to balance the chords and not play them all the notes not to play all the notes equally like also this chord but to balance them that you get the upper note that's very busy and that's more transparent kind of sound so when I was practicing the piece I had always and not you want to hear all the notes but you want 
to hear them in the right ratio, would you say? You want to hear them in the, in the right balance? You want to have the right ratio between what's important and what's less important in, um, in between the chords. So that's... hearing the, the G and then the, basically the D and if you play only the D it wouldn't be beautiful but if you add the other notes subtly in a very subtle way you have a nice nice beautiful coloring and you don't want that's not beautiful play the melodic line you have to adjust your secondary your your secondary chords or the chords or the accompaniment however you want to call them so um, this is what I wanted to share with you in this video it was just a, some some random thoughts that um, well they're not random they're random today but they're not random thoughts they're just accumulated over time with um, teaching a lot of students and also playing the piece myself long time ago I I studied the piece and I found it fascinating and of course it's a beautiful piece everybody it's not no wonder that everybody loves it but it's accumulated knowledge over the the uh, a period of time and I think that if you apply those things you will see a difference in your in your playing if you have any further questions with this piece don't hesitate to contact us and to to mention it in the comments below or with any other piece that you have travel questions recently we recorded something on the Chopin on pieces by Chopin uh, that are so loved. Anyway, for me, as always, recording this video for you guys was a great pleasure. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you, thank, thank you each one of you that that supports our YouTube channel and subscribed. And uh, we will see you um, next week again.